Hey guys, how's it going? Laura with Garden Answer. Today I'm up here in my plant room and I wanted to do a couple of different things in this video. First of all, I wanted to uh, update you on this succulent arrangement that I put together about a year ago. And then I want to show you how I'm gonna tear it all apart and repot it in this terracotta pot. So we published this video January 26th of last year, which means I probably put the arrangement together a day or two before that. So we're coming up on the year anniversary of this arrangement here pretty quick. If you guys missed that video, here's what it looked like in the beginning. And this is what it looks like now. So definitely have some major growth going on, but it doesn't look bad. Let me turn it around so you can see the backside. The plants are all healthy. The only plant that I popped out along the way was that really pretty red aeonium that I had kind of right up here in the front. And the only reason why I pulled that out was because I wanted to use it in a different arrangement. I needed that color. Um, so I didn't take it out because of space issues. It was just because I wanted to use it somewhere else. And I know I can be pretty forgetful about giving updates on my arrangements, and I'm gonna try to be better about that this year. That's one of my goals. Because in a lot of videos, I say that you can get up to a year out of you know whatever arrangement, but I never give any proof for that. So I think it's really important to give updates and um, show you guys kind of how things are doing and any struggles I've had along the way, because maybe you guys are dealing with the same thing. Um, so anyway, uh, this is what it's done. I haven't really done a whole lot to it. It's been watered mm, about every 10 to 14 days pretty regularly. I've had it in the house this whole time. I, ha I haven't kept it outside at all. Um, I did deal with mealybugs on it for just a short time and I was thankful because I didn't really use, other than this um, donkey's tail sedum, I didn't really use any succulents that are uh, powder coated like the blue echeverias that are powder coated. So I was able to use an insecticide spray. This is Earth Tone Insect Control. It's a pyrethrin base, it's organic, um, and it works fairly decent. You have to keep up on it though. You have to keep spraying on a weekly basis to kind of get it under control. It's a little harder on echeverias that have that powder coating because they don't like to be sprayed at all. It kind of ruins their foliage. Um, the other way you can get rid of them is by using alcohol in a, like a cotton swab. So you just dip that in the alcohol and just you know get the bugs off of it. So I don't know exactly what I'm gonna find down deep in here. I know that the plants look really good from the top. I don't see any insect damage or anything like that. Um, the other thing about this container, so obviously it's a watering can, so the opening is only about this big. Like it's just, it's pretty narrow, maybe two inches or so. So I'm not gonna attempt to pull out these plants by their roots. I'm gonna actually just take them all out by cuttings and that's how I'm gonna repot. So I'm just gonna set this one to the side and fill this terracotta pot up with a little bit of cactus soil. And I hope I have enough in here. I didn't think to get some from outside and the stuff out in the barn's probably frozen. Oh yeah, I think we'll be all right. So now the pot is ready. So now I'm gonna deconstruct this arrangement. It's really easy. I'm just gonna take cuttings off with a pair of scissors. So I'm gonna start probably in the back here because that's what I can see the best. This is a Kalanchoe, it's a um, panda plant. So I'm gonna take it off right at the base. See, just like that. And you can see it already has some roots right there, so I'm kind of ahead of the game. That's a nice looking cutting right there. And then I've got some sedum. Now this sedum is probably the biggest culprit for mealybugs in my plant room. I think this is called firestorm sedum. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, I can't quite remember. Um, but when it gets a lot of intense light, the margins of the leaves turn a really pretty kind of red color. They're kind of a pinkish right now. But that's a nice big cutting. Ah, little mealybug action on this one, you guys. If you get in there, you can see that white, kind of hairy looking creature. They're horrible. They are my nemesis in here. So I'm gonna kind of keep this one back. I may not use this one. Everything else looks really clean. I must have missed that one. And then I'm gonna move on to this. There's a crassula, it's called Springtime. That was right in the center there. That one actually didn't put on enormous growth. It was probably like, this tall when I put it in there or so and it had really pretty blue. Well, you can see the blooms, the leftover blooms right there. So it was a couple inches tall. So it's about doubled in size. Yep, I'm not seeing any bugs. I'm just pulling off any dead leaves too, which this one is so clean. I tried to do a good job of keeping them groomed, you know, throughout the season, but sometimes when they're that thick, it's hard to get into the middle um, without breaking any, you know, good leaves off. So I'm really surprised they all look so nice. Next one is this um, Crassula string of buttons. I noticed this one was looking pretty bad. It looks like it got bumped or like broken at some point because the leaves are really shriveled and they're kind of dried. So I'm gonna put this one back in my junk pile. And then I'm gonna take these ones about halfway. I can always cut them down shorter if I need them to be shorter. These are so pretty with the little yellow on the tips. I love that. 
And then the last one is this donkey's tail, which I put on a crazy amount of growth. And you can tell that the back side of this arrangement was facing the window, even though I had it under a grow light, the back side was really full and like thick. And this part was probably toward the front of the room in here. So it wasn't get as in, getting as intense of light. So it got a little bit leggy. Again, we can make these shorter if we need to. So for the rest of this stuff right here, you can pop all the leaves off and propagate them. You can propagate little stems if you want, like you could take off more stems if you want. And it will, if you are patient and you have the time and the space to do it, you can root these and they'll throw off new little baby plants off of the top. Same with their crassula. In fact, when you do this, a lot of times it'll form two at the top and you'll get two nice new little heads. Um, for me right now, I'm gonna just cut this off at the base. So look at how nice that, that still looks really good. I could probably still use this in an arrangement. I might use it. We'll see. See, look at that. You've got a nice little anchor to go down in your container, kind of like that. Hmm. We'll see. Now with the roots, you could also, if you wanted to just keep on taking care of this, since all the roots of the plants are still in here, eventually they'll probably push new plants. Um, and you could have, you know, quite a similar arrangement going on in this watering can. I don't have that type of patience, so I will probably just be cleaning this out and tossing the soil because because I've dealt with mealybugs, I won't keep the soil. I'll throw it away. I don't want to, you know, accidentally spread insects to any other plants or arrangements. So this is going to go. So now I'm going to rearrange my table a little bit so I can start designing. Okay, so my tallest one here is the uh, panda plant. So I'm going to start with this one, kind of do that toward the back. You know what? I think I need a little extra soil because look at this. I forgot to compact it down. All right, I was able to scrounge up a little bit of extra soil up here and then I like to mound it a little bit in the center because it creates a little bit more height and drama and it works really well for succul succulent arrangements. Um, and then also keep in mind that I'm using fresh cuttings for this whole arrangement. And typically when I do an arrangement that with cuttings, I will cut them a few days ahead of time so that it gives the ends, like the fresh cut ends, time to heal and callus over. Because what happens is if they're not healed and calloused, if you add any extra water into the arrangement or if it's outside where it's getting rained on, that uh, fresh end could soak in water, which can cause the succulent cutting to rot. So you really do want the ends to be a little bit calloused over. The only reason why I didn't do it this time is because I really wanted to show you the process of taking the arrangement apart. So what I can do is create the whole arrangement just like normal and I'll just wait a week or 10 days or so before I actually water it. Okay, so I'm gonna start with, again, the panda plant here, right kind of toward the back. I love the texture of this one. So this is probably gonna be my tallest plant. I make sure to tamp it in really nice and tight. And then I'm going to go in with my firestorm sedum because this is the next like most weighty plant. So I'm going to actually make these a little bit smaller. So if you're really careful, you can pop these leaves off. And if you get a clean break, you can propagate these plants, make new ones for other arrangements. Okay, so I'm going to do it about like that. And you can leave the stem this long if you want, or you can cut it shorter if you want. Since I have the room, I'm going to leave them long. So this plant, when you stick it down in the soil where I pop those leaves off, that's what, called a node where the leaf meets the stem and that's where it'll produce new roots. I'm just gonna stick that in like that and I'm gonna continue that with the next three. There's the second one. I'll throw this third one right here and then I'm gonna save this fourth one. I might tuck this one in when I'm all done if I've got enough space. All right, so the next one is the uh, springtime crassula and I'm gonna double check this one for any bugs. Just to be sure. And then also I like to have a little brush. So I've got this little, this is actually Aaron's lens cleaning brush that I stole from him a long time ago. I like it because it's super flexible and I can get in there and just kind of like dust the succulents off. Um, I'm not seeing any bugs in here. That's super important when you're doing a new arrangement. You don't want to introduce pests in right from the beginning. So that, look at that beautiful cutting. That's like a huge plant. So I'm going to put it right on this side. And this one didn't have as much of a stem, so I'm gonna bury it as much as I need to so it'll stay put. Okay, and so for this one right here, see this one's connected right at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and cut it because I want to use it in two different spots. And then we'll remove a few leaves down here. Okay, I'm gonna put this one right in on the side. Doesn't that look nice? And this one's going in right kind of in the middle here. It is hard, you guys, to design from the back. I have, we've been doing it kind of that way this whole time we've been making videos. And I'm telling you what, 
I thought I would get better at it, but it is difficult. So I think I'm gonna actually throw these on this side. And now I know where I wanna use this fourth sedum cutting, right in back of where those blue donkey's tails are. Okay, now the last plants I'm gonna put in here are the string of buttons. And these, I have to be a little bit more careful removing the leaves because I tend to, I don't know why, it's, I think it's just me, I tend to break the stem easier on these. So cut this one a little shorter. Pop it in right here. Okay, I am gonna use this last because I've got a little bit of extra space up front. So I've got the uh, sedum cutting that had the little mealy bug on it. So I'm gonna clean this really well and use this one. I don't really see anything else. I wonder if it was just like a leftover that wasn't alive, hopefully. Okay, I can't see what it looks like from the front, but that is essentially done. So what I'll do is probably look at it and see if I need to add anything else. But that was every single plant, uh, minus one of the string of buttons out of the watering can. Uh, and I might have another one of these cutting somewhere in my plant room that I could add in right here, just for a little bit of extra height. So I'll look for that. Um, but that's pretty much it. So now it'll just sit here in the dry soil for you know a week to 10 days and then I'll give it a little water. It should take off and do really, really well. So to reiterate, this whole video was just to show you guys what a succulent arrangement will look like after a year because I know we get lots of questions, um, particularly about my arrangements because I put my succulents so close together. Um, and a lot of you guys want to know, you know, how long will that last? Are those succulents gonna die? Are you giving them enough space? Um, so I just wanted to really show you what it looks like after an entire year of growing. And of course, I mean, they were overgrown, they needed to be repotted, but that's pretty much true of any house plant that you get. You do want to look at every house plant and see if it's time to repot them. And the fun part about succulents, um, as opposed to other house plants, is that you can kind of make them and mold them the way you want. Like I had those super tall string of buttons. I could cut them in half or cut them really small or leave them long if I wanted to. You could make them bigger or smaller or whatever, you know, depending on what kind of arrangement you wanna go for, the look you wanna go for. They're just so versatile that way. So I hope that this video was helpful to you guys because we all deal with the same things. You know, we all get bugs in our containers. We all have overgrown plants from time to time. And I hope it makes you maybe a little bit more brave about handling your succulents, you know, manhandling them a little bit, cutting them up and creating something new and fresh. And I will try to get better about posting updates on our arrangements like midway points and then you know at the point of uh, repotting what we do and what my method is. Um, sometimes I don't wanna do an entire video on every single project. I do post a lot on Instagram and Twitter. So make sure you're following us there and that way you'll see a whole lot more of what's going on. And I do a lot more behind the scenes um, on those two platforms. So we'll put links down below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.